Today we're going to see in the person of Daniel, a man who fought fear with faith and, and who stepped out boldly to the point of even surrendering his life. And even tells us and demonstrates for us how to find hope in the midst of adversity. I really like his story. And uh, if you'll turn with me to Daniel chapter 1, we're going to, and so that basically kind of wrap it up because like I said, we're going we're gonna to hit a couple, we're going to hit three major things. These are kind of the three things Daniel is mostly known for is his, the whole diet situation, him interpreting a dream, and the last one is him in the den. So diet, dream, den. We're going to hit those three things. And what we're going to find out today is we're going to see that when we recognize the sovereignty of God in our lives, we can trust his plan and follow him in obedience no matter the cost. Then, let, let's go back and consider how he got there. The God that he served allowed his country to be destroyed, his people to be taken captive. How easy do you think it would be to feel bitter about that? To say, God, where were you when that happened? Where were you when my family and friends were being killed and, and just taken captive into a whole other country with these people who don't even believe in you? They pray to stars. I think we can relate to that sometimes where we find ourselves saying, God, why aren't you here? Why aren't you helping us in this moment? But yet, that the audacity of our faith stems from the intimacy we have with God. That how, how bold we can be, how willing we are to step out and say, God, I will follow you. Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my Savior. Our willingness to do that in various circumstances in life, the audacity of our faith comes from how deeply we know God. I believe Daniel knows that God can reveal the answer to him overnight. And so he, he puts himself out there. King, give me the night. I'll come back to you with the answer. He knows God is capable of all things. Do we believe that? I mean, like, give the guy a break. I thought since we're Christians and followers of God, especially someone like Daniel, we should be being protected and everything should just work out. There's a couple of people I, I'm friends with on Facebook and um, this one person in particular always posts these things. Uh, hey, me and my boyfriend are going through some hard times. Please uh, send some good juju and good karma and good vibes our way and it's going to work out. And I'm like, where do you get juju? <laughs> like... I've spent lots of time at Walmart. I can't find Juju. <laughs> and when I think of good vibes, I don't know. I'm, I'm like Brookstone, they got those like chairs and shaky. Like that's not going to help you pay the rent or whatever she's dealing with. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't understand. Do we find ourselves in that place or are we even just bitter? <sighs> See if God can save you. Great God, this, this, is, this is impossible. We see that with our family sometimes. That person will never change. I'll never forgive that person. But, but, if, but if we believe that God's able, that kind of changes our, our paradigm, our perspective a little bit, right? I mean, we talk so much about living life on mission, about like telling people about Jesus by our actions. Daniel was able to do it. I wonder if our coworkers and our friends could say, yeah, that person continually serves God or if they even know that we're a Christian. Daniel was willing to step out in so many ways, even to the point of surrendering his life on several occasions. The third one, I don't think was his fault. Well, no, yeah, he decided to pray. He was willing to surrender his life three times, trusting that God was going to take care of it. 